Good evening, everyone. This is the lifeboat. Captain Calhoun speaking. Can I get a five by five to start us off? Good evening. Monday morning kicked its butt. Now we're here. Now we're here to talk about it. I'm gonna do a little roll call while I wait on that five by five. Maybe I gotta do it twice. Who cares? Jason P, my man, Lumen, Becca Jean, Arya Schleider. Good to see you guys. Paula D, Lacey Silver, Creepy B, Peggy Dooley. Interesting. We'll uh, we'll come back to that here in a little bit, Peggy. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm definitely an alcoholic as well. Heather. Elizabeth Grundy, Chris Wegner, good to see you guys. I'm glad you all made it. Zenwen, the Relata boat. Uh oh. Uh oh. Good evening, folks. Moni69, good to see you. Life's good. That's darn right. JDH, Mr. McCurbastic. McMurka, McMurka Bastic. Okay, I get, I get you. We used to make fun of the um, the girls in our fire troop and call them the Murka babes. I feel like we're on the same wavelength there. Shout out to my Murka babes. Miss you guys, Meredith Lynn. Good to see you, Valerie, Sue B, Packer Girl, Bahama Budgets, Killy Billy, member for two months. Heck yeah. Miss Sunrise Dawn, good to see you. Life's good. I love that name. I'm going to say it a few times. Queen of Awkwardness. Sweet. So we got the five by five. We're good to go. How was everyone's uh, Monday so far? I mean, I guess it's the end of the end of the day. I can't wait to go to bed. I tell you what, I feel under uh, under rested and overworked for sure. But you wouldn't know I set my own schedule. <laughs> you wouldn't know. Yeah, do your thing, Valerie. Um, if I see it, I'll, we can talk about it. I'm sure I'll see it. What, who am I kidding? I'm sure I'll see it. Crazy girl, good to see you. Yeah, I figured we'd talk a little bit about relapse today. It's a big deal. Um, it's something that we're going to run into inevitably on this journey. Um, so I feel like we can never talk about it too much. Um, the odds are, if you're an addict or if you're in recovery, um, you're probably going to relapse or know somebody that relapses. Um, I think you'd, you'd have a hard time finding someone that either hasn't had a relapse or doesn't know someone that's relapsed. I think you'd have a really, really hard time. So this is very relevant. Wine a little bit more says, hey, Spanks, just got off the related boat. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you came. Boy, they uh, they sure do have fun over there, huh? I really enjoy watching a, a related boat, I tell you what. Um, but yeah, relapse, relapse. I think that this time around is my third or fourth because I was born and then I started using and then I got sober and then I started using and then I got sober. Yeah, this is number three. This is number three. I see you, Mary Jones. Um, I'm pretty sure I read it. If I haven't responded, it's just because I'm organizing my thoughts and stuff. I figure, I guess we'll touch on this right now because it's important too. The um, the time slot idea we were, we were talking about yesterday, um, I think is wonderful. I'm super stoked about it. But I also think that it's really important that we implement it properly. So I'm just going to take my time with it and make sure that it's it's great when it comes out. Um you know what I mean? And we, we should be able to hit, hit the ground running here immediately, but I just need to make sure that um, I have, I know what's, what's happening. Um, so I appreciate all of y'all's patience. Um, as, as you wait for me, I'm sure you're all just waiting for me to respond to you. <laughs> and I, I promise I, I'm going to, we're, we're going to get it, get it done. I was thinking today about like how we're going to structure it. Cause I'm going to have to let people in 
every time they want to be on the boat or use the boat platform, right, for the, for a time slot, I'm going to have to, you know, hit the button and and whatnot. And I, that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to like take part in the in in the show at all, right? But I'm not going to give the keys to to anybody, right? I'm gonna I'm just going to unlock the door. So um, that being said. It, you know, I was thinking about schedules and them changing and like how we're going to handle all that. And, you know, if I'm having to let people in every time anyways, then I, you know, if schedules change on the fly, I can just update all of our media sources, aka the, the website, the Discord, the YouTube. Um, and I'm sure that all, all of the ripples also are going to, um, you know, have, they, they'll, they'll have channels to put um, times up and whatnot. So it's just been working on the logistics in the back end and all kinds of stuff that ends up being a whole lot more complicated than it is to explain <laughs> than it is to talk about. So yeah, JDH says alcoholism is no joke. Seen DTs and it goes on for days. Yeah. Delirium tremens is, uh, is some wild, wild stuff. I tell you what I've witnessed it a, a number of times and it's not pretty. Um, in fact, um, when I was learning about DTs it was one of the, the first moments where I realized like, Hey, I probably don't want to see this path all the way through. I probably don't want to be, be, a, be the guy that's like, Oh wait, now I've got, I've got DTs. What am I going to do? You know, um, I can't, can't stop drinking cause I'm just going to get DTs. Um, I'm going to have to check into a hospital because I've taken it to that level. You know, we want to stop. We want to stop what we're doing before we get to that level. Right which is the totally wraps right back into our topic here, y'all. Hey, conversations with Christy. Good to see you. I just shot you back an email. I appreciate your patience. Um, yeah, right back into the conversation, because if we let it get to that point, it's far too late, right? And I don't think that relapse is a net loss, like a total loss. I don't even think it's a net loss, right? We talk about time, you know, I've got eight months, I've got a year, I've got whatever, how much time I've got. Me personally, February 24th of last year. So I've got a year in almost two months. Um, so we talk about that time. We end up getting attached to this time that we've spent sober. So when we relapse, we in our heads, it's this really huge deal. Like, oh, I'm going to have to start over, start counting time again. I can't tell you how much that idea bothers me personally. Um, which I think is ridiculous because if you look at it objectively, I mean, time is just a measurement of, of how it's not a measurement of how far on the journey you've come because your journey doesn't just start over, right? You, you've learned something. Your, your relapse is an opportunity for learning and growth. Um, so it's not a net loss. In fact, I, I would say that you are still moving closer towards your ultimate goal of healing your, your heart and your, and your soul, right? Healing the actual problem, what actually drove you to use, what drives you to use in the very first place. So I don't consider relapse a loss. Obviously it's not desirable, but you know, we'd like to head it off, right? That's the essence of it. If we can head it off, we're probably doing really, really darn good, right? Um, but if you do stumble and fall, get, you know, get right back up, come back, say hello to us. Uh, you're always gonna be welcome here for sure. We see you, Space Jeezel. Hey, Cinderella's Glass Slipper. Slipper, pardon me. Hugs and love to you right back. Matrix Rabbit, I see you. Zach D. So, I'm sure you guys have heard my dad do all of this, but I'm only going to say that that one time because who cares, right? I'm doing it now. Um, there are three stages. Um, relapse is not a moment in time. There is use, right? The final stage of relapse will be when you use again, right? But it starts far before that. You may be setting yourself up for a future relapse. I don't know, in what would like what would seem to be Unre like ridiculous amounts of time before the actual relapse. You can really be setting yourself up so far beforehand. It, it's a little mind blowing and starts emotionally. Um, I was watching some old Admiral videos today and uh, he was talking about isolation a little bit. 
And that struck me because I do a whole lot of isolating, which is not healthy. I probably should not have opened with that, but we're here now. We're going to cross that bridge. Um, Peggy, that's kind of what we were talking about a second ago. Peggy Dooley asked, do you have to start all the way back to one? Start with another number. What I'm describing is how, yeah, you, you haven't been sober for that many days anymore, right? Because you've used. But the importance of that number isn't, doesn't, you, you can't measure the success of your recovery based off of how much time clean you have is what I'm saying. If you want to start your number over, that's cool. Like when I tell you my number, that's how many days consecutively I have been sober, right? So if I were to go use again, I would not tell you a year anymore because I used, right? But the point of what I was trying to say was that I don't think that that uh, defines my sobriety, right? That doesn't define my recovery, I should say, because it's just a stepping stone. If I treat it like the end of the world, if I treat it like I'm starting back at ground zero, it's going to be a whole lot worse than it is. You know what I mean? The important thing isn't that I relapse. The important thing is that I get back on the horse or whoever, right? I didn't relapse. I'm, that might could be taken out of context. But what I'm trying to say is that you get, the important part is you get back on the horse and you, and you keep fighting the good fight. All right? Don't give up. There's always hope. Um, anyways, isolating. I isolate a lot. I don't think that's very healthy, um, but I enjoy my alone time so darn much. Usually isolation is a sign or maybe not a sign, but like a, a, a dangerous practice. It's kind of like uh, dancing on the edge, right? Because if the opposite of addiction is connection and I'm isolating myself, I'm not having connection, right? So I'm not, I'm, I quit taking my medicine basically. If I'm not connecting and I start isolating, I'm basically saying I don't I don't need that connection stuff. I'm good, which is not true ever. I'm not good. I do need the connection. I cannot do this alone. Um, and I would have to wager that it's the same for you, but I can't say that. Only you can say, you know, what's right for you. But I would have to I would put money on that, you know, you probably need the connection too. Um yeah, it's important to have the connection, have people around you, not be isolating, because then we can talk. The people closest to you are probably going to notice the changes in you before you notice them on both sides of the coin. Uh, the further you get in recovery, the more your mind gets back to um, some semblance of sanity and in my right mind rather than not in my right mind. Um, there's going to be changes that your friends will probably notice before you do. Um, and it goes the same for, you know, going the opposite direction, moving towards relapse. If you're in the emotional stage, stage one of relapse, your friends are probably going to notice. So if you're not around your friends, they won't even have the opportunity to be like, hey, what's up? What's going on? What's wrong? You know, been noticing you're a little off today or whatever, what, what have you, you know? And I guarantee you, if you, were, if you would put yourself in your friend's presence, they'd probably ask, you know? Because they care about you. That's why they're your friends. Pardon me. Get lost in the comments sometimes. So we want to head that off. We don't want to hold on um, to emotions. Uh, that's another branch of this connection tree. If you have your friends around you, it's a whole lot easier to deal with emotions. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that you lay them on your friends. I'm not saying that you, you know, vent all the time when, you know, that's not what they've asked for. But, you know, there can be dialogue. There can be connection, right? I, I most of the time ask my friends what's going on with them, you know, because I want to know. And if it is bad, I'm strapping in for it. You know what I mean? I try not to hit them up and just let it, like, let it rip, you know? Sometimes that's what I need, but the point is, is that the emotions aren't being held on to. I like to, and this was, this one was probably the, one of the trickiest parts of this whole process for me was how to, and it probably will be for y'all too, now that I'm saying it out loud. I mean, emotions are hard. They're, they're difficult. The emotional brain is not a logical brain and the logical brain is not emotional brain. They are mutually exclusive. Um...
I like to picture emotions like water washing over me. You know, I, it's real. I'm feeling it. You know, I feel the sensation wash over my body inside me, whatever, but you know, then it passes. I let it go. You know, I can't hold on to water any more than I, you know, can hold on to air. And if you let the emotions go, they will. And I know it's, I try to put it in different terms. So it's easier to, sometimes you have to change the way you look at it if it's not working right. So that's why I put it in different metaphors and whatnot. But once I looked at emotions that way, oh man, it was, that was probably the first huge breakthrough for me. Um, was figuring out how, like figuring out that I had been bottling all these emotions up and then figuring out how to pop the cork on those suckers without uh, creating cataclysmic events in my life. Um, and, you know, I thought it was funny. It's a good time to put this in here. I was looking up, doing research for the stages of relapse. And one of the signs of emotional relapse, which is the first stage of relapse, is taking other people's inventory. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was so ironic. We were just talking about this. This is one of my favorite things to talk about because I feel like people really like to take other people's inventory. And I'm not talking about anyone here. I'm not being specific. This is just in my experience, like in the real world, wherever, everywhere, really. I feel like it's just as a general rule, people really do like to tell other people what they're doing wrong. You know what I mean? I think that's so funny. Um, so that's that can be a sign of emotional relapse, being more concerned with you know, what others are doing wrong and right, uh, uh, more, more so than one's, one's own self, which when you put it in those terms, it's like, why would, why would I be more concerned with other people's well-being than my own? You know, it's, well, it's because I'm sick. It's because I'm not in my right mind, right? Starting all the way back at stage one, not in my right mind. Crazy, right? So how do we head this off? How do we prevent from getting even to this place? This was also a really hard concept for me to learn. I felt like I was constantly going through stage one and I would catch it, right? I wouldn't relapse, but I would go through this, this portion of, of like feeling unsettled, getting itchy, like, like it just wasn't right. I couldn't, I couldn't progress into like actual security, you know, actual like feeling serene, actual serenity, right? And um, I spent a lot of time talking to people close to me, like uh, role model type people, family people, like peers, like my little sister. I talked to as many di diverse perspectives as possible. And I landed on that I'm not getting proper sleep, exercise, and nutrition. If we break this down to like a more intelligent level, um, when you stop using, your reward center of the brain is all messed up, right? Basically, the fuel that your reward center, which is your feel-good feelings, aka happiness, aka dopamine, serotonin, um, you know, your, what's the word, uh, en endorphins? Yeah, your endorphins. The reward center is not working properly. The fuel that it's been operating on for however long you've been using, you just took away, right? AKA the drug, the drink, whatever it may be. So, you know, it's no, it's no wonder you don't feel good. It's no wonder um, you're frustrated, angry, sad, unstable, you know, it's no, it makes perfect sense because your brain doesn't know how to tell you that to be happy, right? So on, if I'm going to walk through this, this, stage, right? If I'm going to, if I'm going to get past stage one, right? If I'm going to, if I'm going to prevent stage one in the future, I'm going to need to do everything I can to bolster and help my reward center, the reward center in my brain restart what everything that I can possibly do to, to, uh, to get my rewards function, rewards center functioning, rewards function reward center functioning properly. And that's where sleep, nutrition, and exercise, I think, are very, very important. Um, if you don't sleep, like, let's say, I think an extreme example, you stay up for three days, uh, you know, you're going to start to hallucinate, right? I think the, the more you lack sleep, the more progressive bad symptoms, bad things happen physically to your body and then mentally, right? 
um, until death. You know, you if you don't sleep for a long enough you, time, you will die because your body doesn't have recovery time. It, your body can't re-up on all the processes that it's been perpetually running for all the time you were tweaking, right? Um, so sleep's very important. I don't have science in front of me uh, related relating that to uh, the reward center of the brain, but um, I bet you money uh, it's out there. And, you know, the next time we have this conversation, I'll have that ready. All right. But sleep, fuel your reward center, nutrition. If you're not, if you, if you picture your body like a fine automobile or, or, or a, a jet, you know, a jet plane, you can't put unleaded in that thing. You have to put the proper high quality fuel in there. If you're just putting potato chips and, you know, if you're just eating snack food and whatever, if you're not putting proper protein, carbohydrates and lipids, which are fats into your body, it won't function properly. And that goes far beyond the reward center. That's every single aspect of your physical being is related to the, the fuel that you're putting in the tank, the food that you're putting in your body. Um, and when I realized that, when I said that metaphor to myself for the first time, when I put it in those terms, I was like, oh, wow, I have been tearing my engine up, just been putting absolute crap in there for way too long. And, you know, I cannot, I can't stress enough what, how much of a difference it made when I started eating well and sleeping well and exercising. Right now, I'm not sleeping well and my exercise could be a little bit better, but I'm, I'm exercising Every, you know, multiple times a week. So my, my exercise is pretty good too, right? Um, even with just the lack of sleep, I notice I get more headaches. My focus isn't 100%, you know? Um, if I wasn't eating well too, I don't think I could do what I'm doing right now. I don't think I could function on this level. Um, which again, I don't think I'm functioning at 100%. I'm, I'm lacking serious sleep right now. But these three things together, sleep, nutrition, and exercise... Um, I think are the th three of the most important things that you can, you can establish for yourself in early sobriety. And all of that starts with being in the present moment and noticing what you're eating, noticing, you know, what time you're going to bed, what time you're getting up, how you feel right before you go to bed and how you feel right when you get up, you know, how that correlates to your day. All of these little thoughts that might f feel a little nitpicky are actually going to change your life if you have them, you know, if you give them the time of day. All right. So let's say we didn't see, let's say we didn't see, um, any of this happening. Let's say it went unnoticed and was allowed to progress. If I'm not seeing, uh, your comments, I'm sorry. I'm just on a roll. I'm going to keep it going. So if you let all of this continue, if you don't head it off at the isolating, at the, at the holding onto emotions and taking other people's inventory, you know, if you allow yourself to, to miss out on enough sleep, if you allow, if you feed, your, if you put the wrong fuel in your body for a long enough amount of time, you know what I mean? You put enough stress on, on this vehicle and the wheels are going to come off. Um, and you'll progress to stage two of relapse, which is mental from emotional to mental. And when we get here, um, so I, I didn't say before, but when you're in the emotional stage of relapse, you may be setting yourself up for a future relapse, but you're not thinking about using, it's not like a thought on your mind, you know, as far as you're concerned, you're, you're doing well, you know, but these other things are happening, whether or not you're taking notice, right? So when you progress to stage two of, of relapse mental, you may be considered, you may be considering using, um, you may be having passing thoughts or, you know, Memories are surfacing of, of past use, right? Past use association is what they call it. Maybe something that's happening right now in the present moment reminds you, triggers you, whatever. You know, these kinds of things are going to start to be more prevalent. Um, your perspective will become a little bit skewed, just a little off, right? Not in our right mind. I guess that's a part of this whole process, right? But I thought here specifically, there's most likely a marked difference. I, when I look back on my, if I'm completely objective with myself as much as I possibly can be, I guess, right? Because I obviously I'm a little biased. I'm me, but um, 
if I try to be as objective as possible and look back when I'm, when I'm in this stage, I'm definitely not thinking properly. Um, when I look back at the thoughts I was having when I'm in this stage, uh, it seems a little crazy, you know, like, how could I think that was smart? How could I think that that was the move to make, you know? Yeah, Breezy Girl, I had to learn that. I had to learn that. She says, so weird. I eat to nourish my body, no junk. I always would eat for fun, you know, or like because my parents were telling me to. It was never something that was a priority for me. I had to learn how important that was. You know, it's not just this uncomfortable feeling in my stomach that I'm getting rid of when I eat. You know, it's actually fueling every single action that I take all day long down to the thoughts that I'm having. Wild. Wild. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel in, the, in this moment, I'm going to take to, uh, to talk about a thought I just had. I feel like I'm very, very serious um, on all the, on all the uh, uh, videos I've done so far. And, you know, I really do like to have fun. I promise we're going to have fun. Uh, maybe I just need to get some serious stuff off my chest so that I can have fun. I don't know. But I feel like uh, this is what I need to do, so I'm doing it. And I appreciate you all. Um, yeah, past use association. Views are getting skewed. You're getting a different perspective. Maybe you're starting to lie. You're telling some lies. Maybe you're making plans to use. You know, maybe it isn't just considering or passing thoughts. You know, this is definitely the scary stage. The only stage after this is use. You know, if you're at the mental stage of relapse, um, you're not doing too hot. You know, newsflash. And again, I'm not beating anybody up. I think that most of us are probably going to relapse. I know I did a few times. You know what I mean? So, like, it's not the end of the road. It's just a new beginning. Um, you may not have as much time sober once you relapse, but you do have one more experience to add to your arsenal of tools of recovery. You have another experience to learn from. Thank you for saying that, the guy JT. Hey, Scooby Lee, I didn't see you earlier. Shout out to Scooby. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? Got some work to do now. I don't know if I can sing. My voice is shot. I missed my tea this, this afternoon, but I do have coffee again. Your nails. Yeah, alcohol is definitely my poison. I have to say, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm afraid of alcohol, but I am afraid of cocaine. Um, yeah, that's, I feel like I've got a good handle on my alcoholism, which I'm not saying I could go toe to toe in, in a cage match with alcoholism, with my alcoholism. He would, he would wreck me. He knows exactly what to do. You know, he would, he would hog tie me and leave me for dead for sure. Um, but, I don't know what cocaine would do. I don't know what I would do. And that's terrifying. Um, I do not feel like I understand what happened to me. I don't under, I don't feel like I don't understand the choices that I made. I feel like uh, for me, the blow is, is a whole nother thing uh, that I didn't know was out there for most of my life, which is pretty crazy, right? But I can relate with you on, on the alcohol. I cannot have a drink. Who knows how many I will have or what will happen. And I think the scariest thing for me with my alcoholism is like, that just made me think of this. It's not necessarily like how many drinks I'm going to have or like I'm not going to be able to say no or something like it is those things. But really like the essence of, of, of I think the real scary part about my alcoholism is that like, Like it becomes normal immediately. Like it's such an insidious, subtle fucking, pardon me, beast disease that it just creeps its way in. I could have one beer after work for a long, long period of time. And then one day it's just, I'm going to find myself dancing a different dance and singing a different song. And it's going to feel normal every time. It never, alcohol never came up to me and was like, 
you're screwing up, dude. You know, it was always like, hey, welcome back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do the thing. We're having a good time. I'm glad you made it, you know? Alcohol has hit me with the roll call. You know, it's like, hey, Spanx Calhoun, glad you made it. You know, every time, you know, it's uh, wants to me to think that it's my friend, but that's not the case at all. He just wants to see me hurt. We don't need that anymore. You guys want to know something cool? I have dropped a word that I shouldn't in a couple of videos that I've made and none of them got demonetized. I must give off the vibe that I am just super professional or something. I just, I must give off the vibe that I never make that mistake because they they didn't see, or maybe, maybe they have faith that, you know, it's a mistake. I don't know. I wish YouTube would explain their, uh, like their decision-making process more um, transparently, but I'm not complaining. I am, I am enjoying the fruits of my labor and theirs as well. So let's go. <laughs> let's go. You know, some alcoholics are me and JDH. I am super thankful. I wasn't one of those super duper thankful. That would be, that would be, uh, some, some serious guilt for me to work through. I tell you what, I can see it now. Lisa Tremble, shout out to Lisa Tremble. And Chow Yun Smut, I did not see you. See y'all earlier. Good to see you. I'm glad y'all are here. Lisa, me too. I have to choose every single day. And you know, it's not necessarily in the morning when I wake up every day. It's like when the moment calls for it. Sometimes a thought will come across my mind. Sometimes I'm at the grocery store, you know. Sometimes I'm just walking to the bus stop and, you know, there's jovial conversation, you know, being shouted out of a business window or something, right? But that is a choice that's being made every single day. You're not alone. You got it figured out? Is that is that how it is? I'm taking notes. I'm just gonna make sure that we got a good good start. New to the channel, Miss Heather, welcome. It was recommended by Tara. Well, thank you, Tara. We we like Tara quite a bit. Um, since she's been here, it has been just a little bit brighter, I tell you what. I mean, have you seen that smile? Okay, I totally have a little bit more to talk about, I promise. This is a great question, Moni. Moni asks, how do you turn off the ants? I love your little hand raise emoji, by the way. That kills me. That is awesome. I love it. How do you turn off the ants, especially when they are running and you're waking up with them going berserk, unfortunately? Well, I have to say, um, I'm sure everyone here can relate with that. Um, that is definitely the default setting um, when my when my recovery started. You know what I mean? Um, and honestly, that's not even a good way to say that. Like, this is me sometimes these days. Like, this is just how it goes sometimes, right? Sometimes my brain is also my worst enemy. And as far as how to turn them off, I'm so glad you brought that up because I've been meaning to talk about this every single show that I've done, no lie, since I started. And I somehow put it at the end and think I'm going to get it and I never, ever get to it. Um, so we talked about a toolbox earlier. We, we were talking about stages of relapse. It's good to be able to identify stages of relapse, you know, so that you can prevent and whatnot. Uh, you're also going to want to arm yourself with tools of recovery, things that you can whip out and when the chips are down, you know, to stay the course. And when my automatic negative thoughts, when my ants are running rampant in my head, I am at risk. You know what I mean? That's not ever good. It's always a whirlwind that's whipping itself up, increasing in rapidity, right? Um, and you know, the longer I indulge that or allow that, the more difficult it is for me to get out of it. And I'm sure y'all can relate, right? Um, in the beginning, the very, very beginning, um, the only way that I could get out of this was to be of service. And what I mean by that is do something not for myself, right? Whether it's like going down to my grandma's and mowing the lawn or helping her out with her garden or something, right? Sometimes she wants me to power wash the garage. When that's the case, you know, I grit my teeth and I smile and I say, I'd love to do that for you, grandma. You know what I mean? But something that's not benefiting me, so, you know, 
they did end up paying me for these things, right? But I don't think that that makes it not service. You know, I definitely wasn't going to go down there just for the money. I was, I was, uh, you know, I was there to to mow the lawn and do the things to be of service, or maybe you know, actually like going and volunteering, getting involved in a cause, doing something for someone else. Service work kept me sober, got me sober, um, and it still serves me today. Um, trying to think of another good example of being of service, um, which is silly because I feel like there's it's such a broad, broad term, right? Um, I should be able to think of a million things that are not selfish, uh, but doing things for other people will, will bring you out of your trap, your head. Um, yeah, service work. I can't state how important service is, even if it's just as silly as like, you know, maybe you're having dinner with your family and you don't usually do the dishes, but you know, you're like, Hey, you know what? Today I got it. You know, thanks for cooking, whatever the case, just little, little acts of kindness. Um, sometimes I, the ants would get so bad. I would immediately get up and go do something for someone else. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it was like that. It was like the hitting the, the, the eject button in the fighter jet, like, boom, I need to be of service right now or I'm going to use. And, you know, for a while it was that way. Uh, it's not that way anymore. Thank, thank the Lord. But. Um, I would counsel service number one, but also my dad talks about getting, getting physical, right? Getting up and walking around using your hands. I don't know. Maybe you like to crochet you have, or I don't know why I said crochet, but maybe you have a hobby that's hands-on, right? Whatever, whatever it is that you can do to get physical, to get your body moving, uh, it will bring you out of your mind as well. Um, so exercise is a good example of that. Um, and, you know, dare I say connect. When you're having your aunts, um, I think you could always, you know, give a friend a call, catch up, you know, talk about something that's not on your mind. Um, obviously, talking about stuff that's on your mind and venting may, may be a benefit as well. But I think that equally as, as viable would be to, 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 to talk about other things, you know what I mean? To do get somewhere else, get some other ideas in your head so that those aren't the only things swirling in there. I hope that helped Moni. I've been meaning to talk about service for so long. I'm so glad that you asked that question. Thank you. <laughs> Relapse and prevention. So hopefully, you don't get to stage three and use, right? Smash room. I've seen those. Those look pretty neat. The scene from Office Space comes to mind where they beat the crap out of that fax machine. I love it. I love it. So prevention. Prevention is what we're doing right here. Connecting. Communicating. Right? Um, it's one of, one of the many things that I like about the lifeboat so much. It's serving a lot of these purposes. It is providing a lot of these tools. It's, or I shouldn't say providing, but facilitating the use of these tools and the learning of these tools. And um, that just makes me so happy. Um, what was that note? Do you ever like take notes and then you're like trying to use them and then you read one and you have no idea what you were thinking when you wrote it? Does that just happen to me? Hey, Christy Hughes, just popping in to say hi for the mods. Thanks, Christy. We love you. Thank you for saying so, Lisa. We appreciate that. Trying. It definitely does serve that purpose for me, 100%. And I mean, this. I wouldn't say that this is a, a selfless thing, right? But this, I mean, we are we are all engaging in a little bit of service here, I think, at least if we're doing it right. You know what I mean? So thank you all for being here and doing it right. <laughs> Go to's talked about tools. So exercise is a good tool, right? Service works, a good tool, calling your friends, your five, right? People you're close to that you can be honest with and vulnerable with. 
have your go-tos so that when the chips are down, when life catches you with your pants down, you don't fall to muse, right? If you have a toolkit ready, if you have your go-tos, you got your five, you know, and you, you've, you know, been exercising a little bit. So you already have like a, a routine or like an activity that you like to do. You're primed and ready, right? If you don't have the toolkit, you can't use it. So get, get familiar with these tools, start using them right now. You know what I mean? If you're not a very physical person, maybe you don't need the, to do the exercise thing right now. Right. But, you know, get your five, um, get, um, identify some, some things that you can do or some people that you can be of service to, you know, some, some help that you can, that you can provide, um, get your go-tos together so that you can use them. Um, I would not be where I'm at. I would not be sober at all, period. I'm maybe not even alive or a free man at all um, without my without my go-tos, without this toolkit, um, and, and without, like, learning these concepts, to be honest. Wow. Guys, I do not want to cut this early, but I'm so tired. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I'm like holding on by a thread. Holding on by a thread. Look at all this connecting going on. You guys are sharing tools with each other. You guys are just making me so proud. This is wonderful. You guys are wonderful. The salt of the earth. I love it. I was uh, watching some of my dad's old videos today on relapse prevention, and uh, I thought to myself, I had this like fleeting thought just randomly pop into my mind. I was like, I bet you I do a really good Tommy Scope impression if I were to try. <laughs> Maybe for another day, I, I've got to practice a little bit. I bet you I, I make y'all cry laughing. Um, question, Sharon Miles asks, why or why or what? makes you move from stage one to two. I am not in recovery and don't have a substance addiction, but have family members who are just trying to understand. Well, I'm glad you asked. What a great question. So if stage one is emotional and I'm isolating, I'm holding on to emotions, I'm taking others inventory, you know, I'm, I'm setting myself up by allowing these behaviors, which are bad behaviors, right? Isolating is not serving me. It's, I wouldn't, I, yeah, it's a bad behavior. It's not serving me. Holding on to my emotions, bottling things up, not a good behavior, right? Taking others' inventory, telling other people, you know, what they should be doing or how they're feeling, you know, telling other people what their problems are, um, you know, paying more attention to other people's problems, having more importance on other people's stuff than their own. These are all signs of relapse, right? These are all warning signs that you're in stage one. And to progress from stage one to stage two, all you need to do is ignore all of that. All you need to do is allow those things to continue. And I guarantee you, you'll be in stage two and stage three before long. The thing is, is when, when you're an addict, when you have whatever's different in, in my addict brain that makes me different from someone that doesn't have addictive tendencies, right? Someone that doesn't have a predisposition or I don't know what the right words are. Someone whose brain isn't an addict's brain. Um, what was I saying? Oh my gosh. Dude, I don't have a brain injury and I, and I do that all the time. Sometimes I'll tell my dad, I'm like, dude, that's just normal. That's just normal. It's okay. <laughs> it's not though. It's not funny. He's actually got a, some real stuff going on. I shouldn't make fun of it too soon. Um, I forgot what I was saying. It was such a great point, y'all. Gosh darn it. Oh, that's right. What's going on in my brain does not require assistance. It will walk through all three stages of this all by its damn self if I don't take control, if I don't take notice. Um, what, what, what causes the move from stage one to stage two is... Complacency is resting on your laurels. Um, if you are in recovery and you have achieved, you know, if you've hit some milestones, if you've achieved, if you've had some, some bit of success, 
resting on your laurels is when you get complacent, right? Whatever you've learned, whatever toolkit you've got, you're just not, not using them, you know? Maybe you're isolating a little bit and you're not taking notice. You're ignoring that. Or maybe you have taken notice and you're ignoring it, right? Um, all that's required to move from stage to stage of this is to just, just let go and let it happen. Um, I think a, an even better question, not to take away from this fantastic question, but I think an even better question would be, um, well, no, that is what you asked. Why? Yeah. You, you move that way because you have an addict's brain, you know what I mean? And you, and you didn't address it. That's why this is so important. Cause if we don't address it, it's, we're just going to relapse. It's just inevitable. Yes. Complacency. That's one of my favorite parts of the, uh, the 12 step book was, uh, 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 we rested on our laurels as a part of the preamble, I believe. Don't quote me, but, uh, it's talking about how, how we came to be here or whatever in this very moment. And it talked about resting on our laurels. I, I love that part. It was my favorite part. Cause I like that word laurel. I don't know why it's a stupid word. <laughs> Life's good says I never have suicidal thoughts. So if they pop in, that's my cue that I need to see my doc for a med adjustment. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Being present, noticing, oh, this isn't normal. This is not what's normally happening up here. What's going on? Seeking, seeking a solution, right? Your solution is you need to go see your doc for a med adjustment. You know, for some of us, you know, it's going to be that I need to, I need to connect and, and, uh, and get my, myself back on the right track before you know, something else. However long the night, the dawn will break, man. Sometimes you just come out with those heavy hitters, seventh son, knocking them down. This is true. This is true, but it doesn't have to be involuntary because y'all can have the conversation beforehand. Like, Hey, this is where we're going to go. Is that all right? You know, that's the purpose of, you know, that's what I would like to accomplish here. And that's all I was, I probably spent a little too much time and fumbled around a little too much with the way I explained that. But uh, um, the only importance is that we're not dumping on people uh, without letting them know, you know what I mean? Like they can consent, consent to sexy people, consent is sexy people. Okay. They can consent to, and whether we're talking physical or, or verbal or whatever, whatever we're talking about, consent is, is really a cool thing, right? That's all I was talking about with this was uh, if you, because we do need to have those, we have to talk about, that's another thing I missed too, uh, Valerie, is we have to, I feel like we have to have these conversations, right? Um, so, you know, we got to find someone that's willing, willing to, to walk through that fire with you. And that's, that's part of the hard part, but I will, I would be willing to bet that there's a bunch of people in the exact same position as you probably here tonight, even right. Um, and also something I've taken from one of my dad's old videos was, um, find someone with like-minded trauma. And what I mean by that is like, find someone that can relate with what you went through, right? Like I would probably talk to someone that, you know, has a history with cocaine and, and crack and, and alcohol, most likely. Right. Um, but you want to find someone that, that can relate with you. I, I don't have the best insight into, into opiates because that wasn't necessarily my thing. I did them, you know, but um, far, far less than, than alcohol and, and crack. So um, I, I would counsel you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to tell people to find someone to talk to because it's such a hard thing. And these are such hard things to talk about, but I tell you what, this is the only thing you do in your life. It'll, it'll be well spent. You know, this is one of those things like so important, you know, find your people so that we can, like, I don't think none of us are going to make it out of this life alive, right? All of us are going to die one day. So we might as well go at it together. You know what I mean? We might as well band together and, pool our forces and our, and our powers and our thoughts and our minds together and our hearts and figure out how we're going to, you know, move forward. Everybody is experiencing this world in their own unique way. Unique. It's not equal. It's different. Everybody's different in their own beautiful and unique way. Right. 
Um, so it's no wonder that uh, that collaborating with other humans that have their own unique perspective on things is so beneficial, right? We end up learning things that we never would have because someone else is looking at it in a way that we never could have. Look at me go. When I'm on a roll, sometimes I'm just a poet. Yeah, find your people. You all right, Seventh? I'm just catching the, the butt end of something. 188 days. He's better than good. He's great. I'm going to have a trophy to, to shake around for you guys soon. I, uh, been talking to, to Matrix Rabbit as well as, uh, my dad. He was supposed to bring me that. He was supposed to bring me the Molesky today, but he didn't. Didn't, did he? It's all right. He's got all kinds of stuff going on. And you know, Life's Good says, I just want to learn how to be more graceful in my communication. This is something that I probably will be practicing for the rest of my life. Um, it is more of an art, I think, than a skill. And I think we can all always learn a little bit more about communication. So half the battle is being willing and open to it, right? I'm here for it. That's what I always say. I'm here for it. Sorry if that was a huge answer, Valerie. I just got real passionate. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, I need I need a shorter screen, I think. Yeah, no sweat. Take your time, dude. Take your time. I just wanted to give you a shout out. I wanted I guess I should have asked your permission first. I screw that up sometimes, but I'm so stoked that uh, you want to do that. And I just wanted everyone to know how cool you are. It's literally why I did that. So I hope that's all right. Next time I'll ask, I swear. You got to want it. Yeah, you got to want it. You definitely need to want it. Totally. And even if we take it to like a text format, right? Something that's texted versus said comes out way different. Um, just because it has, you have the ability to put that connotation on it, that little flare, right? Communication is such a, a, when you really start thinking about how we can make sounds with our mouths to each other, and then our brains tell us that that means that this idea concept, and then we can have entire conversations. It's very interesting. And you know, I don't think you're alone. I do not think you're alone. Uh, Mr. McCur Merka Merka Basket. Merka Merka Basket. I'm just going to say that totally wrong. I'm sorry. It's the main thing that disturbs my peace is miscommunication. Miscommunication. I'd have to say um, that's that's probably a very common a common feeling. Uh, there's not a whole lot of really good communicators left in the world. Now, I think that the advent and the speed at which the advent happened of all of this technology and social media um, has kind of left communication skills or, I mean, I think communication is also being redefined. Not only is it a dying art, but I mean, the way that we communicate with each other these days is very different. You know, this is communication, albeit digital. Texting each other is communicating, right? It's just not face-to-face. -face. It's just becoming something entirely different Um, but that's not to say, I mean, there's all kinds of miscommunication happening rampant. <laughs> yeah, I should start doing that, Christy. You're totally right. And honestly, if someone went back and tried to find the video I took it from, they would just be giving me views. So that's okay, too. I like views. Views are good. Everybody likes views. Right? Unless you're at a funeral. That might not have been funny, but I thought it was. All right, y'all. The number of people here is 69. I think it's a sign I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> so like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and hit the all if you'd like to stay subscribed. Um... 
Yeah, you guys are great. You guys um, I, are what I get up in the morning for, literally. Um, so thank you. Thank every single one of you. Um, everyone that, um, uh, all, all of my ripples out there, oh, we're going to be in contact maybe tonight. We'll see how, how far this coffee carries me, um, but probably tomorrow. Um, and, and, uh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm not like shaking excited like I was last night, but man, it's going to be great. So look out for some communiques from me tomorrow, my ripples. Um, and I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Practice some, uh, practice some tools tonight. All right.